The great Bill Belichick once said, if you listen to fans, you'll be sitting up there with them. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about the things that we as fans do not see eye to eye with the franchise or Eric Spolstra on. So the first topic I wanna to talk about is Big Yurt Yersevin and the fact that we as fans think he should start. And I'm not gonna say that we all feel that way. To me, it doesn't matter. I'm cool with whatever Eric Spolstra wants to do. But a lot of fans basically feel like this is the year to start Yurtsevin. And honestly, I'm not sure if he's a lock to start because we know Eric Spolstra loves Bam at the five and a lot of people really don't understand it. But Eric Spolstra has always been a defensive coach and you know, Bam, has done a really good job staying in front of players. And also, he's been playing the position for a while, so Eric Spolstra is quite comfortable with leaving him at the five. So that's the first issue that a lot of fans do not agree with. The second issue is the fact that Bam is actually playing the five. So fans, have never seen Bam Adebayo as a center slash five. We've always said that, you know, Bam is a power forward, but realistically, there are centers that are smaller than Bam's height. So it's not like it's out of the question for him to play center. A lot of people feel like he's not big enough for the position, but when you look his weight up, he's 255. And if you look at his frame, he's basically a smaller Dwight Howard aka his big brother so over time he's going to continue to get stronger and we're not in the age where you need to be a big strong tall center and get to the nba finals which is that's the end game for us the end game for us is to have all our players healthy and get to the finals and if you look at the teams that are getting to the finals their centers are the same exact height as bam Bam can't be too small if Kevin Looney and Robert Williams are not too small. They're the same height. So they may be an inch or two longer, but it's not like Bam has Julius Randle's wingspan. You know, they said Julius Randle has dinosaur arms. Like, so if he's 6'9", they're basically saying his wingspan is 6'9". That's disgusting. Bam actually has a nice wingspan. It's just not as nice as maybe Kevin Looney and Robert Williams, but it's not a significant difference. Another issue that he fans do not agree with the organization with is small ball. So I think a lot of he fans are still stuck in the past where you had to have a seven footer and, you know, guys like Zaja Pachulio, you know, six eleven, seven foot was playing center and so your big man had to deal with guys like that on most teams and that's not the case i mean if you look at the pistons yes they drafted a center but last year they played isaiah stewart and he's 6'8 i mean he's a big 6'8 but he's 6'8 so the thing with small ball is it allows you to switch everything so yes there might be a situation where you might get Joel and beat on somebody that's significantly shorter than him, right? Like we know we got a power forward situation. And even when we have PJ Tucker, he was 6'5", but that doesn't happen often. And usually we'll have Bam switch back anyways. And Bam's already too small for Joel, but hey, he's, he's a good defender. So he's gonna do what he can. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll let the chips fall wherever they fall. In regards to, you know, playing centers like uh, Joker and Joel, they're, they're gonna get theirs, but at the end of the day, we can still win that game. So small ball actually can be great defensively and it can be great offensively too, especially if you've got players that move at the three point line. So, you know, last year we had PJ Tucker who only stayed in the corner. So whoever replaces PJ Tucker won't be limited to the corner. So with small ball, more than likely your your power forward is going to be able to you know pick and pop um and then they get the option to pick and roll but pick and pop 
actually will work out better for us in most situations because if you're doing it with your four and five and your four is mobile, he's probably going to be open because, you know, the five might have to go and pick up, you, you know, your power forward. So I really don't see why fans have an issue with small ball, but it's here to stay. Eric Spolstra has always been big on small ball. Golden State Warriors, they're small. Boston's not that big either. So look at the good teams. Don't follow these teams that don't even make the damn playoffs or, you know, teams like the Sixers who, you know, they haven't been to the, I don't even, when was the last time they went to the, the Eastern Conference? Like, why are we following teams that are beneath us? You know, we need to be looking at the Celtics and uh, Golden State. That's, that's our competition right there. That's who we're trying to match. You know, we're not trying to match the Sixers. We're above them. The next issue that fans have with the organization is the fact that they feel like Bam is untouchable. So in the Kevin Durant trade, they asked for Bam. And the problem with giving up Bam is I told you guys that if we gave up Bam, and when I say you guys, I'm talking to the Heat fans that I'm in the trenches with. If we gave up Bam for Kevin Durant, Yes, we could start Yersevin, but what if Yersevin is included in the trade? So now we're going to have to start Deadman. That's probably not going to happen. Spoh going to end up starting Kevin Durant at the five. So, and, and I'm not saying it would happen every game, but it's definitely a possibility that's going to happen because he's still going to like small ball. So the whole idea of getting Kevin Durant is we want to pair him with Bam and Jimmy Butler. So if we got to give up Tyler Hero and other pieces, that's fine. But we want to keep that core together. We want Bam to play the center and Kevin Durant to play the four and Jimmy to play the three. So again, though, getting back to the point about Bam being untouchable, why are people so hard on Bam? He's only 25 years old. He's not even in his prime yet. And he's well respected. Like the media loves Bam. I've never heard anybody say anything bad about Bam, even though we obviously know Bam needs to work on his offense and he needs to stay aggressive. And he's definitely disappeared in a few games in the playoffs on us especially when uh you know robert williams was healthy so a lot of people feel like that's now like his nemesis and it, yeah you know i could see a little rivalry going on there in terms of you know watching those uh boston games and you know wanting to see if bam can actually outplay robert williams because again they're the same height but robert williams is a little bit more physical so bam is 25 and honestly he's our best young asset some people might say it's tyler but Tyler doesn't play defense like he's not a horrible def defensive player, but he's not a good defensive player. I, I would say he's just above Duncan Robinson and that's still not good. I still remember the game versus the Sixers where Maxi was killing us and, you know, they just kept switching on to Tyler and just, you know, killing Tyler defensively. But hey, he's in the gym. It looks like he's putting on some weight. Hopefully he comes back next season and starts and plays better defense. But I don't see the issue with Bam being untouchable. He's only 25 and he's already been an all-star. The next issue that fans have with the organization is them not trading for Christian Woods. Christian Woods, and also I'll add Miles Turner to that. So Christian Woods, he's a good offensive player, but not like a great offensive player. You know, like I'd probably take Kristaps when it comes to offense over Christian Wood. But hey, maybe I just haven't watched enough Christian Wood, but I really don't believe in the Christian Wood hype. Uh, we know for a fact he's not a good defensive player. I mean, he just had a 46 year old, you know, basically tear him up. And I know it's practice runs, but come on, he's 46, like, come on. But yeah, everybody knows Christian Woods is not a good defender. So a lot of people wanted us to trade for Christian Woods to pair with them and we'll figure out who plays the five and who plays the four. But Christian Wood is not a player that we should have traded for anyway. So I'm glad that Dallas was able to get him. Maybe it'll work out for him. Uh, now trading for Moss Turner, it makes sense. You know, he shoots threes, he plays defense. We like defense, Eric Spolstra likes defense. And we also like offense and he can score. Uh, well, I'm not gonna make it sound like he's Pascal Siakam or you know, another four or five that, that can consistently score, but he can shoot threes, and he, but he could play defense. That's the most important part. But the problem with doing this is we're committed to the Kevin Durant situation. So we don't want to trade a first round pick for 
somebody like Miles Turner. So when you're, you know, getting frustrated and not seeing these trades go through, it's because we're trying to keep our assets for a trade from for for you know Kevin Durant. So unless he gets traded, then maybe you might see a trade for a guy like Miles Turner, which he does match what we're doing here. Another issue and the final issue is a lot of people feel like since we let PJ Tucker walk, which was the right thing to do because he's 37 and he's got to do what's best for him because that's his last big contract. He's getting 10 million a year for three years. He'll be 40 getting paid 11 million a year. That's dumb uh, for us. You know, not going to knock Philly. It's probably going to work out for him. I wish PJ Tucker the best, but for us, it didn't make sense. And, you know, right now it looks like we're waiting to see who we can sign in free agency after we figure out this whole Kevin Durant situation. Or maybe we never figure it out and we just kind of say, all right, maybe it's going to happen sometime during the season. But it looks like we're going to move forward with the players that we have with guys like Caleb Martin saying that they're going to gain weight to play the four. And with us randomly signing two-way contracts for players like Darius Day, who's also on the size four, he's six seven. He's actually pretty good. He's a four-year college player. So, you know, when I say he's pretty good, I mean like he's good enough to get calls up call ups from the from the G League. And, you know, if you have a two-way contract, you can play up to 50 games. So there's always a possibility that, you know, you might see some Darius Day at the four. When it comes to the starters for the four, it's looking like it's going to be Caleb Martin and Highsmith, who Highsmith has been with us for a while now. You know, we did give him a three year contract back in March. And in my opinion, he's like a younger PJ Tucker. He's not good right now. Like, you know, he didn't light up Summer League. He didn't really do much. He didn't do what Max Struess did last year in Summer League. So I'm not trying to sell anyone on Highsmith, you know, we'll see how he does when training camp starts next month. But you got to understand that the options that we have for power forward right now, they're not limited to corner threes like PJ Tucker. So, you know, let's let Eric Spolster figure it out. Maybe he does drop Bam down to the power forward position and start your, you never know. But yeah, fans definitely do not agree with the lack of urgency for a replacement for. And that's the final thing that I would say he fans disagree with the organization slash Eric Spolstra on. Guys, let me know in the comments if I miss anything, because I'm sure there's a ton of things that we're going to change our opinion on throughout the season and maybe even when training camp starts next month. So if I miss anything, please comment and let me know. All right, guys. Peace.